That song reminds me of my mother. She is a very easy spirit. And some of you have met her here when she's visited the temple. She's 94. She will be 95 on August 5th. And on Thursday, she fell. And she went to the emergency room, and they discovered a fractured hip. So on yesterday, she underwent the surgery. She came through in flying colors. And I know that wherever my mom's spirit is traveling right now is divine order, because she's easy, like Sunday morning. That's why I can stand here, even with that news that I just got a few minutes ago before the service started, and speak to you today, because I know that's what my mother would want me to do. In fact, in ICU, I can guarantee you, she's doing what mamas do. She's praying for her children. I always like to start off with something a little funny, and I'm gonna dedicate this humor to our own Kathy Sweeney. If you haven't met Kathy Sweeney, she's from down south. She says things like shiny foal, which means shiny foil, you know, like aluminum foil, shiny foil. Kathy, where are you? <laughs> we call each other sister from another mother. Do you remember Tennessee Ernie Ford? Bless your little pea picking heart. Remember that? Now, I know some of you are not as chronologically proficient as I am. <laughs> But some of you are, <laughs> so you remember that. So I thought I'd take a page from Kathy's book and give you a little bless your heart. See, Southerners can get away with saying bless your heart. Now my mother comes from Arkansas, so I'm very familiar with the phrase. When I hear it, I know I'm home. He was so pole, that means skinny. He was so pole, he had to stand twice to see his shadow, bless his heart. <laughs> Bless his heart, if they put his brain on the head of a pin, it would roll around like a BB on a six-lane highway. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> so as long as the heart is sufficiently blessed, it can't be an insult in Southern language. It's not an insult, it's a compliment. It might not sound like it, but trust me, Kathy can tell you it is. So one day the phone rang at a mechanic shop. A young woman answered the phone. There was a man who worked there who was waiting for a heart transplant. And so when the phone rang, it was a hospital, and they told her the news. And she yells out, Sam, your parts are in. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk about the heart. And that's why I'm giving you a little humor to get you started to listen to what I have to say about the heart. My mom has a pacemaker, and she's been expecting to get a battery replaced this summer. And the last doctor who had to come in to make the final decision as to whether she could have the surgery was her cardiologist. And after running a test on the heart monitor, on the pacemaker, determined that she was strong enough to have the surgery. The last doctor, now all these other doctors had already discussed it and felt that she was suitable for the surgery. But the last word comes from the heart doctor. Your last word comes from your heart. So I want to talk to you about that. You know, last week, Nian opened the Untethered Soul series we're doing for the next six weeks. Duke will be here next Sunday to talk about part three. And I'm talking about part two. And if you remember, Nian talked about space travel and how similar to space travel, we have inner space travel. Now, I don't know about you, but my inner space is very busy. It's a busy highway. There are thoughts running crisscross. They're not paying attention to yield signs. They're bumping into each other. I have all this stuff going on in my head all the time, these voices in my head. Now, fortunately for you, I don't, t I don't speak all of them. Because if I did, you'd get up and run out of here. You'd think, this woman has totally lost her mind. But I'm sure you have that too. So one of the things that I think is the best thing to do when you have all these voices and you have all this confusion going is to laugh, to laugh. And that's why I always like to start off and infuse something funny into my talks. Laughter is the best medicine. Do you know that young people laugh 100 to 200 times a day? You don't believe it? When the little kids come up here, watch how they're laughing and giggling just to be up in front of you. And do you know that surveys show that adults only laugh, laugh zero to seven times a day? 
So you're not getting enough laughter. And life is meant to be funny. I mean, don't you ever think about something that happened and you, you just have to laugh? Even though it might be a serious thing, it's, it's just you have to laugh. So have you seen the commercials with the Snickers? <laughs> well, my husband often reminds me that I need a Snicker. <laughs> you're not yourself when you're this way. When those voices start coming, going in my head, he knows that I need a Snicker. And if you haven't seen the commercial, it's from the, I believe, the Brady Bunch, which was my daughter's favorite growing up. And the, this guy comes in, he's got a hatchet, and he slams it on the table, and he's so angry. And then the parents say, Marsha, you need a Snicker. Why? Because you're not yourself when you're, when you're this way. So sometimes that Snicker is a laugh, right? Your Snicker, you may be a Snicker, a giggle, or a guffaw, but you need a good belly laugh. Don't take life so seriously. The heart muscles respond to laughter. Did you know that? The heart relaxes with laughter. Endorphins are released throughout your body. The blood pressure moves in a more smooth manner. You know, your heart only weighs between 9 and 11 pounds, 11 ounces. Rather. Well, some of you might have pounds, but I don't have that big of a heart. <laughs> but, you know, it's about the size of a cl your clenched fist. Imagine something that small with so much power. It's the fifth major organ in your body. But the heart is the center of it all. It changes your perspective. When the heart speaks, everybody can tell. You can talk from your head, but when it comes from your heart, it touches other hearts. If we could turn the lights down low and actually see it visibly, every heart would be lit up like E.T. Because we can reach each other throughout. We may not even speak the same language, come from the same backgrounds, but the heart knows. There are 150 songs I found on the internet that relate to the heart. You know some of them, Achy Breaky Heart, Unbreak My Heart. I mean, I, I bet right now your thoughts are running amok if they're anything like mine, Steve. I've got songs just going all over the place in my head about the heart. I couldn't find that many songs about the brain, the lungs. <laughs> so there's something about this thing called heart. Your heart beats 60 to 100 times a minute. 100,000 times a day, if it's beating normally. 30 million times a year. About two and a half billion times in a 70-year-old lifetime. Now, my mom's 94, so her heart's been beating a long distance. Each beat sends blood throughout the body and carries oxygen and nutrients to every body part. It pumps out about 10 pints of blood, covering about 60,000 miles of vessels. 60, how many football fields is that? 60,000 miles your heart is pumping out making touchdowns every single day. So that's the physical heart, the one that the doctors can examine, they can regulate, they can do a transplant. But what about the real heart, your spirit, your essence of who you are, the spiritual heart? How do we define that? It's a masterpiece of creation, according to Michael Singer in the book, The Untethered Soul. It brings harmony into the body, like the singing we hear on Sundays, like Andres playing the organ and Robert playing the piano. But unlike any of those instruments, the heart is an instrument, but you can't really see it. Like you can see the organ, the piano, and the choir members. You can't see it. You can feel it. And when you feel music, like Jerome singing, Easy Like Sunday Morning, it's the heart that feels the music. It's the heart that senses the vibration. It's the heart that resonates. Now, Singer says, few people appreciate the heart. And I have that on the front of the bulletin. Your heart is one of the masterpieces of creation. It has the potential to create vibrations and harmonies that are far beyond the beauty of piano, strings, or flutes. You can hear the instrument, but you can feel your heart. And if you think that you feel the instrument, it's not because it, you touched, it's because it touched your heart. 
Your heart is made up of, of extremely subtle energy that few people come to appreciate. When the heart stops beating, all other functions cease. The center of your soul is your heart. Now, I want to talk to you about an open heart and a closed heart. You know, we talk about open heart surgery. But I'm talking about the spiritual open heart. What does that mean, the open heart? An open heart expresses kindness and love and compassion in relationship. It's the reason people gravitate to you and feel at home when they meet you. It's that warm hug and that greeting you get when you walk in the door. That's the open heart. But our hearts don't always stay open. Sometimes our hearts are closed. And when we experience a closed heart, we experience loneliness and isolation and feelings of lack and limitation. But I have some good news for you. If you have been experiencing a closed heart, and we all do from time to time, there are some ways that you can keep your heart space open. I'm going to share that with you shortly. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity in the Revealing Word, said the heart is but the visible expression of an invisible center of consciousness. It is the center from which the divine substance is poured forth. As used in scripture, the heart represents the subconscious mind. So all those thoughts that are going through your head, when you take them to heart, you express them into reality. That's why we need to be careful the thoughts we think and the words we speak and keep in us a clean heart. Now consciousness, some, some people say, is that annoying time between naps. <laughs> but what I mean by consciousness is what Nian talked about in the first part of the book, what Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. When you're truly conscious of who you are and you're living your truth, your true self, consciousness. Now, some of us walk around unconscious all the time. We say things we don't mean. We do things we shouldn't do without even thinking. But most of us, and I guarantee all of us in this room, are consciously aware most of the time of our thoughts, words and actions because we know the law and the unity principle that says we create our reality through our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Now you can't stop thinking, you know. I've thought so many things today. Remember the queen said to Alice in Wonderland, well, I think at least six impossible things before breakfast. So if you have a mind at all, your thoughts are always thinking themselves. So I was trying to figure, well, okay, what should I wear? Maybe pink's not a good color. Oh, my hair is going to be so frizzy with all this humidity. I hope that uh, Steve is okay with all that stuff I sent him on the email with all these songs and the craziness I do. And then I get the message about my mother. So my thoughts are going, oh, will I be okay? Am I going to be able to stand up there? You know how that is. You're t how many thoughts have you thought today? I mean, they're just running around in my head. And the only way, the only way to be at peace is to relax, let go, and let God. Relax, let go, and let God. So the book talks about doing just that, going deeper than your thoughts, your feelings, and your emotions. Going deeper in consciousness. So in part two, we're talking about experiencing energy which is what the heart puts out, energy. I remember as a child saying, if I really believe something, and I was trying to convince somebody else, and you know this one, cross my heart and hope to die. I never figured out why we would say that. It's probably been carried over for generations, just something fun for kids to say, but you know, words have power. And thoughts are things, so I don't use that analogy anymore. <laughs> so
So there was a study by the University of Maryland about the heart. And they were looking at some heart patients. And they decided in this study, the thesis was that emotions contribute to the elasticity of the blood vessels. And so the study revealed that the arteries respond to laughter. So if any of you have any clogging of the arteries or you feel a little sluggish, I just want you to right now let out a real belly laugh. <laughs> Doesn't that feel good? Or does it just feel funny because I'm acting, making a fool? But I mean, you know, it just, it made you laugh. Because when you laugh, remember, you, you release those endorphins that have been stored up, all those negative thoughts and ideas that are stored in your heart center. Memories from the past that you no longer need, that no longer serve a purpose in your life. Unforgiving thoughts, attitudes, Anything you're holding on to that keeps you from moving forward and being what you were brought into this world to be. Laughter is the best medicine. They found out that laughing out loud, such as watching movies like Something About Mary, makes the blood vessels dilate. So I expect you guys next week to have watched every funny movie you can and we should be able to see the dilation right in front of our eyes. Now, if you're watching gruesome scenes like in Pri Saving Private Ryan, they found that the blood vessels constrict. And a, a constricted blood vessel is a symptom of someone about to have a heart attack. So by all means, release those endorphins. That's not to say there's anything wrong with the doctors. This study was done by medical doctors who were looking at beyond the scientific phenomenon of the heart. They were looking at what contributes in some people to a happy heart, what the Buddha calls the gladdened heart, the gladdened heart. Scripture says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Guard your heart. It is your life blood. My grandmother would always tell me if I had on a blouse that was, it just came right to here, she would say, you better cover your living because she considered the heart to be your living. Cover your living, and it is. Now, you can't totally eliminate stress from your life. We know that. But Singer says that you can shift your consciousness through your energy centers, and one of those, that chakra, is the heart. It doesn't matter what's going on on the outside, what's going on in your thoughts, what's going on in, in your world. You can still shift your consciousness. You can still focus your energy on truth. And the truth is that no matter what happens, all is in divine order. All is in divine order. And you are not your heart. You are the experience of your heart. So one way that I like to release endorphins in addition to laughing is I love to dance, which my family know, most people don't. But I also like to listen to good music. One of my downfalls about paying attention to my heart is I also like dramatic movies and TV shows like the haves and the have-nots. And what I've found is I can only watch the haves and the have-nots during the day because if I watch it before I go to bed, it affects my heart. I think about it when I sleep. I feel like I'm part of the movie. Have you ever been in a movie where, at a movie and you feel like you're part of the movie? You're talking back, don't do that. Oh, don't go there. Oh. Oh my God, you're, you're part, you get caught up in the movie. We get caught up in our own dramas when we step away from our heart center. See, we are observers in our own movie, each one of us. You're sitting here right now and have a whole script going on in your head. No telling what you're thinking. But I'm sure you've got a drama going on at some time or another. You know, some people show up for church, they sit in these seats, and they look like they're paying attention. <laughs> you know who you are. They're way off in space somewhere. They're not paying attention, they're not even here. They are watching a soap opera in their head, waiting to see who gets pregnant and who gets a divorce. I see it all the time, I do it myself. When I get bored or distracted or got too many thoughts going in my head, I tune out and I don't pay attention to my heart space. 
That's what I'm talking about. It takes a conscious effort to tune into your heart. Science, there's a principle that says an object in motion will remain in motion until acted upon by an equal and opposite force. So I can wave my hand and it just keeps waving, but if I stop my hand, or if you push my hand, it might stop. So negative thoughts can remain in motion until the positive, until I force the positive, not just force, but allow the positive thoughts to flow in through affirmations. There is nothing in all the universe for me to fear, for I have faith in God. God satisfies my soul and fills my life with unending joy. So when I got the news about my mother, that was my first thing, was that affirmation. There is nothing in all the universe for me to fear. There's nothing in all the universe for my mother to fear. There's nothing in all the universe for my family to fear. There's nothing in all the universe for you to fear, for I have faith in God. God satisfies my soul and fills my life with unending joy. In Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 21st verse, we read, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I found 100 references in the Bible to heart. So heart's really important. We need to pay attention. Think of when you're feeling energetic and happy. How do you feel? How does your body feel? How does your heart feel? And then compare that to when you're excited or anxious about something or upset. And sometimes the heart just starts fluttering and skips a beat. We need to pay attention to that. So, what are your weak points? What are your triggers? As an observer, you can look at your life as if you're watching a movie. And as things come up, you don't have to stress, you don't have to push, you don't have to fight, you don't have to struggle. Just use the power of non-resistance. Just watch what you're thinking, how you're feeling, observe that, and then you can make necessary adjustments, like the pacemaker, or like the medicine that you may have to take for some thing that the doctor's treating you for. They make adjustments all the time. If you know your body, if you watch your body, you can make the same adjustments consciously. Everything starts in the mind and then the heart fuels the soul. If you have an open heart, you can change anything in your consciousness, no matter what's going on in the external of your life. So, and once you practice prayer and meditation, especially affirmative prayer, and the meditation and the silence that we do, do this on a regular basis, you'll find that your heart center begins to become accustomed to the easy flow of truth, no matter what's going on on the outside. And so, through prayer and meditation, that's the key. That's the key. Michael Singer talks about it in The Untethered Soul. Charles and Merrill Fillmore practiced it and taught it for years. That's why we're all here, the co-founders of Unity that in the silence, there's a secret place. That's where the heart resides. You may think you know me. I may think I know you. But until I know your heart, I really don't know who you are. And so let's take those thoughts into meditation. Let's practice the silence in the heart center.
truth is there. In truth, we know there is no out there. There is only in here. Your heart knows the answer. Find a comfortable position in your seats. Remove anything that may be a distraction to you from your laps. Let go of any thoughts that may prevent you from being here now. Take a deep, slow, relaxing breath. Breathe into that heart space. With each breath, allow yourself to become more relaxed. Invite the soft music to enable you to open your heart to awaken the inherent joy from within so that you can look at the world with joy and gratitude. Feel your heart swell with joy. With each slow, relaxing breath, feel your body, mind, and spirit open. If you find yourself distracted by thoughts, noises, or physical sensations in your body, simply draw your attention back to your breathing. Focus on each and every breath. Or you may place your hand over your heart space and just breathe. Your heart knows. Love is the sacred connection from the heart. I invite you to take these words as your own as we go into the silence. Just as the sun has the power to warm the soil and nourish a seed, divine love has the power to transform my life for good. I now journey within to experience the simple gift of love in me. My mind is open. My heart is receptive. In this presence, I am grounded.
slowly return your attention to this place in time. As you do, take these words as your own and use them throughout the week to enable you to be fueled I open my heart to your sacred presence, dear God. I trust in your enduring love. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed at every level of being. In the stillness of your holy presence, I am renewed, I am restored. 